Hi, I'm Meg. This week's art assignment is called The One That Got Away, and here are the directions. Call a phone number that's provided. Leave a message saying what you would say to the one that got away. Tell us you've called using the hashtag the art assignment and your social media platform of your choice. And uh, prompt someone else to do the same. So I encourage you to do the same. Voice may be featured in a sound piece composed by Oliver Blank, and he is the artist who has assigned this art assignment. He specifically says at the end of it that it doesn't have to actually be a person. It could be like a job opportunity that was missed or uh, when you had, you know, a decision point at some point in your life and you went one way and could have gone another. And so I'm going to tell you about uh, my dog who died. So we had changed apartments and we had lived in a bottom half of a duplex for about five weeks. And, you know, we're still kind of getting to know the area and the the sort of enclosure for the dog area was not strong enough to hold uh, my dog. I had two dogs. I had Merlin and Meriwether, and we still have Meriwether. But Merlin uh, one day pushed the the like enclosure door thing open and ran away, and he ran all the way to the interstate, and he got hit by a car and killed. That was really devastating for me um, because I was really attached to Merlin and loved him a lot. So this art assignment is about that experience. Okay, seven, five, five, six. I'm really nervous, <laughs> really nervous, even though I know it's just gonna be to like a voicemail basically. I want you to tell me about a lost love, a missed connection, or an opportunity that simply eluded you. So after the tone, tell me what would you say to the one who got away? This message is for Merlin, who is my dog who got away and as a result got hit by a car and killed. Uh, for the first few days after you died, I would wake up and there was this short moment right after I woke up before I would remember that you weren't there anymore and I would be expecting you to come up and sniff at me or lick my hand or lick my face and then all of a sudden I would remember and like be heartbroken all over again. And, uh, you know, eventually that sort of faded and then for a few weeks I would, I would have dreams about you where you would be running and just looking like you were so happy and, you know, running up to me and, um, thanks. Goodbye. No, oh, well, I guess, uh. I ran out of time to uh, sort of finish my thought there, but um, when I, so after, when Merlin died, I had this sort of naivete that like bad things like that didn't happen to me, that just sort of like got shattered in he was sort of a uh, heartbreak training for me because I ended up having a lot of um, other bad things happen in like the, that following year. Um, but in some ways it was helpful in my life that we lost him because it's been easier to move and not have like a lease with um, you know, a medium sized dog and a great big dog. Merlin was a big dog. Um, so, you know, I was really heartbroken and I wish he hadn't been quite so neurotic as to um, go barreling out. And I know he was like looking for me because I wasn't home at the time and um, just decided that, that chasing the cars on the highway was the thing to do. So, <sighs> 
it's sad. It's a sad story. But on a more uplifting note, I will show you my awesome dog, Meriwether, who, thank goodness, was inside that day and did not get out with Merlin. It's a happy dog. Puppy. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.